Well, if you're looking at me, you must have come back uh, uh, for more um, Reed Kellogg uh, diagramming American uh, system of explaining syntax. It's my 85th day, the first video. And what I often like to do is well, I look at my previous videos and I catch mistakes. Well, in uh, yesterday, I made a mistake in agreement in number. Uh, I spoke and said uh, a subject and a predicate is something. I should have said subjects and predicates are. <laughs> I, I'm a little embarrassed about that, but I thought, well, I can use it as a way of teaching. That's called a mistake in agreement, in number, uh, something that I will talk about more in the linguistics section of uh, these notes. Again, the overall course that I'm giving has got a section on linguistics as well. More of that later. All right, morphology. I have already taught that. I taught that as preparation for syntax. I'm teaching syntax now. And I think I mentioned that you could find it back in video 70 point something. Well, I did the research. I looked on the YouTube channel. And the first video about uh, morphology was the 42nd day, the first video, 42.1. And it goes up to the 72nd day, first video. So uh, it took me 30 days of teaching, I guess, to, uh, to cover morphology. Um, more, more than that number of videos, because uh, you know each day I sometimes did two videos. So look at that if you want. Uh, if you really are going to understand syntax, you, you have to know your morphology. Uh, but I think a lot of my viewers maybe already do know their morphology, so I can safely go straight to syntax. Well, within those videos, there's one chart. Uh, I show a chart, which I think I actually... I have it behind the blackboard. I'll get it out again. But I, I, I devote a video to showing you that chart. It, it's in uh, the video, uh, the 56th day, the, uh, the second video that day. Uh, I highly recommend that you look at that chart. Uh, that isn't syntax. Again, that's taking up words individually. But it, it would be useful. All right, uh, dealing with what I taught yesterday, coordination, I think I mentioned that I would, have you, I would write this down for you. Coordination is one of those seven processes uh, that go on uh, in constructing sentences. Well, coordination, it joins sentence parts, maybe subjects, maybe predicates, maybe clauses. Those are the three I've talked about so far. It joins them without putting one sentence part under the control of another sentence part. It is coordination. Co is Latin for uh, together. Now, there's the word order, and I'll sort of give orders control here, and they are equal. On that chart, you will see coordinating conjunctions at a certain point, and, or, but, sometimes for. That's about all of them. There aren't very many of them. Uh, well, anyway, I showed you, uh, I have begun to show you coordination being used in sentences. Uh, what I want to deal with uh, today is modification. That's going to be the third of these seven processes, modification. And in the next video, I'll, I'll show you how it's diagrammed. Uh, but in any case, modification, what it does is it changes sentence parts. Uh, back in morphology, uh, one of the bare necessities of grammar, I call it, you've got to know this, is what, what is an adjective? Well, an adjective is a word, I should have really said is a word or words, because adjectives can be phrasal. But in any case, an adjective is a word that modifies a noun or a pronoun, that is, changes them. Uh, uh, an adverb also modifies. An adverb is a word or words that uh, modifies uh, a verb, an adjective, or another adverb. That's part of the bare necessities. You, you have to know that. Uh, that's the morphology. Well, I'll show you that in just a moment as, as, sentence, as sentence parts, more sentence parts. Um, all right, now, now in Reed Kellogg diagramming, the subject is shown first. This deals with word order. Uh, uh, regardless of how the sentence itself is constructed, when you uh, put that plus there, on the left-hand side of the plus, that's where you put the subject. And on the right-hand side of, of the plus, that's where you put the, the predicate. Uh, uh, and I say even in questions. See, in English, we'll ask questions using the helping verb do. Do you understand? Well, do starts that sentence. But when you diagram it, and I'll show this to you in just a little. Uh, when you diagram it, uh, you would start that 
that diagram on the left of the uh, plus with you and do understand would go on the right. So it looks like you do understand. What makes you realize it's a question is that the, the D will be capitalized. So what you need to do is look for the capital letter. Another thing about Reed Kellogg uh, diagramming, there's no punctuation. No punctuation. Uh, ever, I don't think. You simply don't use it. You don't really need it. Um, another thing that they, you don't ever do in Reed Kellogg diagramming, and I think this is maybe one of its great charms, is that there are no terms. You don't put down subject or predicate or, well, all those other terms, which I think you do in other diagramming systems. No. The diagram itself shows uh, the relationships. Uh, all right, and then uh, uh, one other thing uh, related to yesterday. Uh, I showed you co compound clauses in what's called, or coordinated clauses in a compound sentence. Uh, and those compound clauses, part of the rules of Reed Kellogg diagramming, is that when you connect them, and I took a dashed line down, and then I went over and a dashed line down, and I put the word and on that little shelf. Well, you don't just connect them anywhere. You connect them by the simple predicate. That's one of the rules. All right, that kind of gets us uh, ready to go on um, with a little bit more. So I'm trying to do this today in two videos, and I have just realized that I went back to speaking fast. In my next video, I will try to speak more slowly.